I saw the post that you made. Uh, I'm really inspired by that. You guys are amazing. Um, you guys look like different people in that second photo. So uh, congratulations to you and your wife. My brother and I uh, just did a, a seminar over here at Super Training Gym, kind of a war on carbs, uh, carnivore meetup seminar. And uh, I just, I saw the uh, picture because you guys are, are following the war on carbs hashtag. And I uh, just want to let you know, I'm proud of you guys. That, that takes a lot, it takes a lot of courage to, first of all, admit that you have an issue. And then secondly, to follow through with it is uh, truly unbelievable. And uh, that kind of stuff motivates and inspires me. So awesome job, congratulations. Leaving a message for this guy right here. You can see he's a meat eater. <laughs> This isn't so much always about, look at that, before and after right there. I mean, look, I mean, really pay attention to that. I mean, look, I mean, the progress is, is, is insane. The, the woman does not look like the same woman at all. I mean, really, really outstanding progress. But this isn't so much about like trying to sell you on a specific diet. Although I, I'm a huge proponent of a ketogenic style diet, a low carb style diet, and the carnivore diet. However, I think that due to like religious beliefs or whatever beliefs you have, I think that you can eat slightly differently. But I think the most important things, the most important thing and things are the things that you abstain from. And that's just like sugar and flour. I mean, I could sit here and hammer you all day long with, with the war on carbs and, and how, you know, I eat bacon and sausage and Polish sausage and kielbasa and like all these weird things that I eat, hot dogs even. Um, but it's not, so, I, you know, just from firsthand experience and being around for a long time, I just hear so many different people telling me how much progress they made with this diet and with that diet. But what always remains the same is that they went through some sort of period of time where they cut out something. Even people that track their macros, even people that track their calories, they may insert a little bit of bad food here and there, but it's like a sprinkling in of bad food, you know? Whereas maybe in the past they had three sodas every single day, they ate a big ass burrito at lunch, and then at dinner they had a cheeseburger, fries, and a chocolate shake. Well now, all they're doing is maybe every third day they just have that chocolate shake or they have that fast food meal, but they're still, they're still abstaining away from more and more junk. So I don't want to ever sound like I'm some sort of crazy fitness person. I never want to sound like I'm trying to, I just, I just want to motivate and inspire you guys to take these steps because I think they're critical. And I think these are things that can uh, change your life forever as they have with some of these people. If, if you, just looking at this hashtag, you know, this war on carbs hashtag, there's like 47, 48,000 people, 45, sorry, 45.6, I'm exaggerating. Um, but there's thousands, look, just, I mean, you just scroll through and it's like, just freaking just, look, uh, this person cured up their skin problem because of what they eat, right? You know, what if you're like my, my brother uh, who took his own life um, 11 years ago? What if you're like him? And what if it could save your life? What if the food that you're ingesting could save your life? I think it's logical for us to say, oh man, like, you know, you shouldn't really like drink a lot of alcohol because that can do a lot of negative things to you if you drink too much. It's like, that's okay, boom, logical, you know, it's a logical thing. Okay, too much alcohol, not a great idea. And it impairs you and it can affect your behavior. It can affect your driving, right? It can affect all these things. We can make logical sense of that. But when it comes to food, you know, doing food that insults our metabolism, doing food that insults the way that we were designed and the things that we're able to do, I mean, alcohol is processed, right? And it, ha it has a, a direct... Um, it has a, a very negative uh, effect on us. And then, it, like, why can't we take the same thing and understand that about chocolate? Why can't we take the same thing and apply that to ice cream? Why can't we take the same thing and apply it to pizza? And then also, too, like, let's, let's have a little fun in our lives. Let's, you know, let's uh, party a little bit here and there. 
let's have some alcohol in our life here and there. Let's have some pizza. Let's have some ice cream, right? I agree with that because um, these things are here and they're wonderful. And what kind of life is it to live to have to abstain from them forever? But what if it's what if it's ruling your life? What if it's taken over your life? You don't want it to be that way. You want your life to be more like a lot of these people. You can see my brother's in almost every single one of these pictures. Whoops. Um, he's, uh, he's clogging up the, hash, the hashtag, so I got I to gotta yell him about that. But what you'll also find on here is um, you'll find, like, you know, different people uh, eating different styles of food. You know, on this style of diet, like you can occasionally, I don't think it should make up the majority of your diet, but you can occasionally get some fast food. The diet's not hard. How hard is it to travel and do a ketogenic diet? It's simple. The war on carbs is simple. When you go to a restaurant, most what do most restaurants serve? Most restaurants have meat. And if you're a vegan, most restaurants have vegetables, right? I mean, there's not a lot of places. The only, the only place I can think of off the top of my head that sometimes doesn't have like a meat entree, sometimes like an Italian food place. But they still usually have some sort of meat like mixed into their pasta and stuff. And you can, you can almost always get a salad somewhere, you know, with chicken on it. Or another thing you can do is something that I love to do, and that's eat before I go out to eat. <laughs> I do that quite a bit because that helps with cravings. Let's say, you go to, let's say you go to a restaurant and you know that that restaurant takes a long time. Well, if you go to that restaurant and you know it takes a long time and you scarf down a ton of their bread, even though you told yourself incessantly that you're not going to do that, well, you really, fail, you really failed big time because you already know that that restaurant takes like an hour to serve you the food. First of all, you probably shouldn't be supporting that restaurant anymore. That would help. But number two is, if you are gonna do that, you know how long they take. So don't be stupid, don't be naive to it. Don't be ignorant, don't, don't uh, you know, don't drive yourself insane with their behavior. Just eat before you go there. You'll be fine. Have a handful of nuts. Have some uh, handful of nuts. You can't listen to me say that without laughing, right? Grab a handful of nuts. Uh, eat some cheese. Um, eat, eat a little bit of meat before you go. I do that all the time. My wife's always like, why are you eating? Like, we're about to go out to eat. But it, it's really something that helps me. But just, you want to be inspired. You want to be motivated. You know, don't just take it from me. You know, check out IG do this hashtag war on carbs and you'll see the thousands upon thousands upon thousands of people that are doing the diet and they're having a lot of success strength is never weakness weakness is never strength catch you all later